get up here. It's the most beautiful Sunday afternoon you'll ever see. <laughs> and I have the history of the 508 Parachute Regiment with me, and somebody took a picture of the 508 jumping, and the sky is full of parachutes. Yeah, really oh, yeah, is. just a few planes, but you can just see. Yeah. Just it, lo it looks like a little co gossamer a kind of on the clock. Mm, uh -huh. mushrooms. It looks like a pendulum on the clock. Yeah, uh, Don, uh, we have a call. This happens to be the caller happens to be my baby. Okay, uh, Doctor Boo. Uh, go ahead, Boo. You're on. Good morning. Yeah, hi, great. Uh, really am thankful you guys got Don on. I think he's probably got more information than we'll. You know, he's. Could probably if we had him on for six hours we could have that right. much information. But Don, the question I had for Don was, uh, I mean, there's been some very what have been well acclaimed World War II movies that have come out in the last few years, Saving Private Ryan, um, uh, Band of Brothers on HBO, which was about the 101st, um, and certainly part of that, there was Bridge Too Far, which was about Operation Market Garden. I was wondering if he if he thought any of those movies was more accurate than the others or which one he thought portrayed a little bit of, uh, of what they went through? Well, in my own opinion, I think The Longest Day showed it more realistic yes, than, than most of them. Now, yes, we are a knit group. I don't care if you're the 11th Airborne, the 101st. No, I have a little story behind that, but I'm not going yeah, to. I'll tell him later. <laughs> I'll tell you later. But we are a knit group. We'll, we'll fuss and fight amongst ourselves, but don't you pick on one of us with the rest of them around. <laughs> right. So you really thought The Longest Day was the most realistic from what you experienced? Yes. Yes. And where, did, where did you land when you hit the ground in Normandy? Where, uh, where did you land? I was eight miles from where I was supposed to be. Our plane was going down. Okay. I should have landed outside of Chef DuPont. Okay. But I landed outside of a little village called Reagansville. And how long before you got to where you were supposed to be? How long did it take you to get where you were? Two and a half days. Okay. By accident, I got hooked up with the French resistance forces. And they would move me only when it was safe. And on the afternoon of the, well, the third day, uh, we ran into a fellow from the 505 who was working his way up from Chef DuPont to send Mary Gleese. And he told me that everything was clear. And the resistance force that was with me, he spoke uh, he spoke pretty good English, not fluent. But uh, he said, okay, uh, they say everything okay to Chef DuPont, go. And man, I took off. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you use that leg bag, the, the, the famous leg bag? The what? Know? The leg bag. The leg bag. Leg bag. No, we didn't have that. Okay. So you kept your. So your uh, your weapon didn't get lost on the jump. Some weapons would would break loose, but my Thompson submachine gun was underneath uh, two different belts that crossed, and and uh, I didn't lose my Thompson submachine gun. You might tell him what your password was, because I asked him if he had one of those little crickets, and he said, yeah. no, that was another unit, but tell him what your uh, password yeah. was. Okay, if I said flash, you better say thunder. Yes. <laughs> and uh, a lot of guys yelled something when they went out of the plane. Did you yell anything, or did you just get out? Well, most of the time, I just, just got out. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I remember... When my parachute opened, it was dark. You couldn't see the ground. And the only thing I said was, thank God it opened and I'm in combat. <laughs> yeah. And did you carry a reserve chute on that jump? Or were you yes, we did carry a reserve suit. Reserve, okay. Did you, did you do reserves in Holland? We, well, we jumped pretty low in Holland because okay. it was a daylight and there was German troops on the ground. We wanted to get... Uh, close to the ground as we could. Okay. So now, we, in some of us, I know I left my reserve chute in the plane. There would have been no time to, be, to get it open right, and right. pull it out. It was too, yeah, too low to the ground. Now, in Holland, were you involved in that crossing with the boats across that one river? Not, well, we crossed one river, the Dove River. Yeah. And uh, it was in canvas boats. Were you involved in that operation? Well, yes. Because that was fairly famous. That was the one Robert Redford portrayed in, in uh, A Bridge Too Far. 
Yes. You yes. were in that group that went across under fire? Yes. Wow. Tell me about that. Well, it was a canvas boat, and I knew that darn bullet wasn't going to do much good. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't going to do much deflecting. And, uh, it was, so were you paddling or were you shooting? We were paddling and both. Okay, okay. How long did you then, then we had a long area where we had about a, about a quarter of a mile of flat ground to go across after we got off the water. And that, that's where we got most of our casualties. And your smoke screen blew away, right? Didn't they give you some smoke initially and then it blew off? Yes. Okay. There was smoke down, but the wind was in the wrong direction. Well, and they were hitting you with mortars when you are in the water, right? Well, there was mortar fire landing around us. Okay. Some boats wow. got hit. Wow. But you didn't get you didn't get a Purple Heart on that one, huh? Not on that one. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. It's a miracle well, he's here, boo. Well... <laughs> I mean, that was one of the most famous operations the 82nd was involved in, was that crossing of the Dove River yes. under fire. Yeah. And I know that, I, did they give a Medal of Honor to that Major Julian, whatever, who, who led it? Didn't he get a Medal of Honor? I think I think he did. Yeah, I think that he was did. amazing. But I, I'd like to make a little comment. She said, I'm still here. Well, they say a cat has nine lives. <laughs> this old Tom cat's used 14 already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Boo. Thanks for your call. Thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Thanks for your call. Would you like to talk this morning? Give us a call. 508, they're born of the 82nd. Okay. Uh, <laughs> into Normandy, and from there, uh, he worked his way into Europe, and then you flew and jumped over Holland yeah. also. He has a little. Uh, what do you call that? A little button that you put on your jacket. And he wants to tell us about it because it's really distinctive. Well, it's it's a miniature set of paratrooper wings. It's not a pin on it. It's a it's hey, paratrooper I wings. Oh, okay, but it, you put wear it on your jacket. You can I, wear it any place you want to wear it. Oh, okay. But anyway, where the suspension lines come down in the center of the... Uh, wings is a, it's not an arrowhead, it's a spearhead. Because we say that the airborne troops spearheaded the Normandy invasion. When our plane wheels left the ground in England, as far as we was concerned, the invasion was on. Mm -hmm. We were in there securing bridges, railroads, things that we are destroying what we were supposed to, communication systems at 1.30 in the morning. I was trying to find out where I was at. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, most, he most was lost in a field. A lot of them landed close to their objective. Point. Yeah. And uh, I carry these with me, and I give them to people who uh, I think might deserve one. I only brought one set with me this morning. Shall we flip for it? No, I think you'd win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it is. It's, it's, it's a... I enjoy giving them, and I say it's an honor. It is an honor, and I thank you very much. Looks like you're going to get one, Nancy. Yeah, I will wear it always, and I'll tell everybody about you. Well... And what you did. And my son will be so while you're jealous. Get, while you're getting that on, Nancy, we've got a caller. Uh, Pat, well, why don't you go ahead? You're on. Yes, I want to thank Don for his service and all the other veterans and the people that were at home backing them so sure. much for their service. And I have, this is kind of a silly question, but he brought up the fact that they were buried in, in, over in Europe and then could be moved home. I had an uncle that that's exactly what happened to, and I've always wondered what happened to the cross that was in the graveyard in Europe? The cross. The cross that, that they marched the graves with in Europe. Did okay. they just take those down, or did they just move them to another person? No, they, they, they take them down. Okay. I, I don't know exactly what happens to them. I never thought of that. But the curator of military memorials and cemeteries in Europe is a friend of mine, and I'll try to remember to ask him what happened.